All right, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lou Rowan. I'm with Schneider Electric. I'm part of our uh, industrial automation team, especially our end user team. And I focus a lot around our PLCs and automation like that. And so today we're going to talk about a next generation automation system. Um, who in the room talk, gets involved with PLCs? Yeah, no. <laughs> it's a great, great crowd. <laughs> All right, so this is gonna this is gonna change the way you look at PLCs, right? Um, first, let me say how, how many people are using our PLCs, the Modicon PLCs? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what we're gonna talk about today, if you haven't seen this already, is we all you know we have a couple of software that are out there, control expert and machine expert. It doesn't change what I'm about to talk about. Doesn't change what we're doing. We're not replacing anything, but we are adding. We're adding to a new a new category of software called infrastructure automation expert. It's built on the IEC 61499 standard, but we'll get into that a little bit later on and why that's a big deal. So I don't want anybody to panic. I all my stuff going away. It's not. If you've been in a Schneider Electric presentation, you probably see this all the time, right? It's our IOT stack, right? Connected product, edge control, and apps and analytics. And at the end of the day, what do we really do, right? We, we just put our product into categories. Not a whole lot of revolutionary technology that's in here. What I'm about to talk about today blows this chart up. It changes the game. And so everyone's felt, felt this in your personal lives and in business. We are moving to a software-centric world, right? The last 40, 50 years on the factory floor, we'll talk the factory floor, whether you're water or whether you're in buildings or where, wherever you are, we'll talk the factory floor, PLC automation has been hardware-centric. The future is all about software. In your personal lives, you probably have a lot about 80 apps on your, on your cell phone. Everything is about software. You're talking here with Aviva, being here with Aviva, right? And trying to look at the investment in Aviva tells you a lot, the future is all about software. And so as we look, <clears throat> as we look into the software, we're saying, okay, well, you have the last 50 years, all hardware, uh, software tightly coupled with the hardware, and we'll talk about that in a second. But we talk about industry 4.0, cloud computing, artificial intelligence, augmented reality, all about software. And I think when we look back, when we look back 10 years from now, we've been talking about Industry 4.0 for a number of years. But I think when we look back, we'll probably start to look at right around this time as we're really bringing the change, the real big change of Industry 4.0. Because that's when we're starting to see a lot of the product from a software perspective and a hardware perspective hit the street. So let's look. This is a PLC system today. Not much has changed. You have a PLC up at the front end. You have some distributed I.O., and by and large, you have a lot of instruments that are, are connected hardwired to the I.O. Nothing has changed in 40 or 50 years. Yeah, we've added some, some networks. In this particular case, it's Ethernet network. Um, but at the end of the day, all we're doing is pulling these devices and bringing this data back to a centralized PLC. But if anybody, in the, anybody out here have an idea of what the future looks like, when you talk about this architecture, how does this change in the future? Cloud here? IoT. What does that mean? Anybody else? Arduino Opera. What was that? Arduino Opera. Arduino. So the guy who can make Arduino is a tiny little computer smaller than a Raspberry. Ah. Ah, you're on to something. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you look at smart devices, right? Uh, everything is becoming smart. So while this is not part of our offer today from an EAE perspective, and that's what I'm here to talk to you about, <clears throat> it is a smart device that will be into our line at some point. And if you look at this, it's a standard motor control um, motor starters, motor starters and contactors, but it's smart. So you see, there's no there's no control wires, there's no auxiliary um, wires that come back. All you have are the wires that control the motors that's here. And on the front end, you have an Ethernet device. Communicates to it. You do the control, the status, and a plethora of advanced analytical data that you can pull out of that 
to do whatever in your software. That's the future. Well, I can imagine a time in about five, ten years if they're building a brand new plant that maybe there's no I.O. Maybe that's an exaggeration. But maybe every device has an Ethernet port to it. It's not a far stretch, right? And if that, if that is the case, what does your PLC look like? Obsolete. Could be. It looks like a switch. That's exactly it. It looks a lot like a switch. And so we talk, we hear a lot about the IT and OT convergence, right? We haven't seen it in our world today yet. PLCs. The PLC industry has been kind of isolated from this. The DCS world is starting to see it. I'll talk a little bit more about that later on. But we start to see this technology pressure from the top coming down into the IT world. Or excuse me, the OT world. The IT world coming down to the OT world. It kind of makes sense, right? I start to see that. Well, what else does the IT world have that the OT world doesn't have today? Open standards. Everything in our world on the OT side is proprietary. So just like today, half of you, probably more, have Apple phones, and then the rest of you probably have Android phones, right? You live in that sphere. You live in that, that's where you live. And usually you don't switch back and forth. Some people do it, they experiment, but most people stay there. And if you ask them, it's not because the phone is better or not. I have an Android, I love my Android actually. But it's because you're already in that sphere, you're tied to it. I'm tied to my phone, it's a Samsung phone, it's a Samsung, it just works. Your family might be on the same brand, it just works. Same thing is true for the factory floor. All the hardware connects, is the connections there, and you don't really want to move. But if there were open standards where everything was the same, this was a generic product that was here, and it was just all about the software that was running on it, then it wouldn't matter, you just switch the stuff whatever was a better hardware. That's what we're talking about here today. So when we look at these devices, when these devices are smart in the field, and we say, okay, why, why do I have to take this data and bring it back to a centralized PLC to run logic? If these, these devices that are now in the field are truly smart, why can't they just talk to each other? Why can't they just do true control at the edge? You've heard that too, right? Probably not in our business, but now you're starting to hear it. Control at the edge. That's what this is all about. What makes that possible are two standards that are out there, universal automation and IEC 61499. I had mentioned that in the beginning. That gives you the code and the ability to transfer your logic out to those devices. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later on. And then universal automation. Universal Automation is an independent organization that was started by Schneider Electric, we're a founding member, and where other vendors are, ad, are being added. And what that is, it creates the operating system. It's an independent organization that creates an operating system that gives it to different vendors so they can put um, a, a standard uh, engine, basically, for the logic. That makes all these devices in the field generic. So if I don't like, if I want to run, so I can run my, my logic over here. So in the case of a tank, where I want to control a level of the tank, basically the valve, the instrument, the drive, maybe some other instruments, the motor starter, they're all talking to the drive and the drive can control the level of the tank by itself. Doesn't need a controller out anywhere. We push that logic out there. Now the beauty about universal automation is that you're not stuck in a Schneider Electric sphere only using Schneider Electric parts to make this happen. Universal Automation says, hey, any product that's out here that adheres to Universal Automation, you can, you can use. So if you want to use an ABB drive, or you want to use a Danfoss drive, or you want to use somebody else's drive, you can absolutely just, if it adheres to Universal Automation, you plug it in, and you can send the logic. That's a win for the end user, because now he can choose best-in-class products out on the factory floor. It's a win for an OEM. An OEM, they don't have to develop three standards or four standards of their machine. They can put their money 
into developing what they do to build in a, a better machine instead of having to support many different products that are on the floor. That's pretty powerful. I was out at ARC. Has anyone been to the ARC forum? You've been to ARC? Okay. Um, a lot of DCS customers that are there. Big driver behind this, it's called open process control, by the way, driven from the DCS side of our, our world. So I, I'll separate, it's all automation and control, but I'll separate the two uh, from the DCS side and PLC side. The DCS side is all talking about open process control. You can look it up. They have forums developing standards for this. Exxon is a huge driver behind this. In fact, we have some field trials going on right now. Shell, big. And you can, you can understand why. A company like Exxon has about 40 refineries around the globe. The life of an automation system is about 20 years. That means every six months, every six months, they have to update a refinery. And that's forever. And so just think about the money, the time, the effort that it takes to upgrade a refinery on their automation system. And at the end of the day, they start it up and they're like, hey, I, I'm doing the exact same thing I did yesterday. Yeah, I got some new technology, but I'm still making, right? The same oil and gas, or whatever you make. <coughs> and they say, well, why, why can't I just, I own this intellectual property. Why am I reinventing this intellectual property? Let's create a standard that we can program to that can update independently from the hardware, separation of the hardware and software. Today, if you're using our PLCs, or you're using Rockwell PLCs, or Siemens PLCs, in order to program it, you have to use their software. You have to use our software. There's no disconnection there. Very tight, couple. We want to disconnect that. Ecostructure Automation Expert is an independent software that can program, and you send it out to devices that adhere to universal automation. So today we have two two vendors out there, Stahl, and they heard of Stahl, to make intrinsically safe I.O. We can send logic that's developed there right to the Stahl and operates just like it's a Schneider Electric I.O. Phoenix Contact has developed another one. It's not commercialized yet, but it's also out there. But they're another vendor that's on board with this and can go out there. This is changing the game of the automation on the factory floor. Universalautomation.org, if you guys are interested, if you see the value of it, please go out there and join. Take a look at it. We're looking for people, we're looking for customers that want to join and help us, guide us, guide the specification that goes there. This is our initial offering. So this is not, I'm not talking about, uh, I'm talking about the future, but I'm not talking about vaporware or advanced marketing. This stuff exists today. So today we have a, an ATV pack that's a controller that runs inside of our drives. We have a 251 D-Pack, a small economical PLC size. Uh, M580 D-Pack, high performance, X80IO, distributed control. And then we have a soft D-Pack. And in my opinion, this is the future. Um, while we show it running in a Schneider Electric PC, it can run anywhere, it's scalable. It can run anywhere from a Raspberry Pi device all the way up to a blade server. And then later this year, you'll see that we'll come up with redundancy. Again, using IT technology to do the run. This is a Linux-based box that's here. So think about all the technology from the, from the, the Linux side of our business, the IT side of the business that's out there coming down. Think about redundancy for a second. When you go out to Amazon, you go to Google, or you go to any of those websites, they have failures all the time. Do you, do you notice this? Absolutely not. Okay, all redundant. Redundant twice, three times, four times, maybe five times. All your data is backed up multiple times. The failures all the time, you don't see it. It's IT technology. We're bringing that to the, we're bringing that IT technology to the factory floor. Later this year, you'll see we will have hot standby, hot standby using uh, IT technology on a Linux-based box. Today, that Google technology, IT technology, is not there. It's not fast enough, right? So it's 500 milliseconds or a second to update your Amazon website. Um, you can't do that for a 
automation, right? It has to be 20 milliseconds, 10 milliseconds, every click. This is the next generation controller we have. It's a prototype. We have some pictures that are up there. And so, so why it's a little rough. Um, <laughs> but you can see, you can see what we've done is created a box, a controller, right? This is a whole controller that has a removable processor size. So what's the updatable size on a, on a Linux box or a computer? The, the, the processing chip, the memory, right? So instead of replacing the entire controller, why don't you just replace the stuff that's, that's upgradable, which is the automation, the, <coughs> the memory, the user processing speed, right? Who are we partnering with? Intel. Intel is developing, right now again, the IT side of the world, right? We don't know who the Monocon chips are that we have inside there, but then everybody knows Intel. Intel, yeah, we're talking about different players. Disruptive technology has a way of having different players enter the realm, right? Everybody's got a flat screen TV in their house today. My guess is that when you were a kid, the, the television players were completely different than they are today. That was disruptive technology when it came out. And it took the old people and just pushed them aside, right? Disruptive technology, Nokia. Everybody had a Nokia phone. They were a giant, right? 70 something percent market share. And then Apple came out, said it's all about the data. It was a one two punch for Nokia. Unfortunately, it was, it, was, uh, it was not only Apple, but then it was Android right behind it. And then took the company out. Gone. A matter of two years, it destroyed the company. Disruptive technology can change. So you see, we're about to change. We went out to, everybody's heard of chat GPT, right? So, yeah. and go ahead and put in there um, two, uh, pump, uh, two pump control in ladder logic. Bam, pumps up the, the toy. It didn't do it in ladder, actually. It didn't instruct the test. It's still amazing. So you copy and paste it. That's amazing, right? So think about how you will thought four years, five years from now, what is that technology going to be? You're just going to tell the computer what you want, and then it's going to program it. That's amazing, right? It's coming. So the idea behind this, by the way, and if you talk to Exxon, right, and they're driving two specifications. One is around the, the software side that we've been talking about, and the second is about the, the hardware side. So what they would like to see happen, I don't know if it's going to happen, what they would like to see happen is that this, this slot, this size, this connector is a standard connector. So that, yeah, that this could be your Schneider Electric one, but if you wanted to go and buy a Dell box and throw it in there, it's, it works. Just like you do today in the IT world, when you buy software, you don't think about what laptop you have that has to run on it, whether it's a Lumino or whether it's a, a Dell or some other brand. You just It just works. That's where they want to get to. That's where Exxon would love this whole industry to get to. This connection is the software from the hardware. We're at the infancy, it's all about to change. And the funny thing is that the, the, the uh, ECS people, they see it, they're talking about it. I was at ARC the last couple of years in a row, and they're constantly having uh, you know, conversations, uh, seminars, and everything about it. The PLC world, every time I talk to the PLC guys, they don't see this coming at all. But it's about to. So again, disconnecting the software from the hardware. Talked a little bit about that. What makes this possible is this IEC 61499. This is the, uh, we add CAT to it. The composite automation type. If you're familiar with our stuff, we have DFDs that are somewhat similar, right? You take your logic and you encapsulate it into a block. But this is the same type of thing. This CAT object model creates a block that not only has your logic inside of it, but it also has your graphics. Your graphical object inside. So if you create a motor, you can create what the picture of that motor looks like. And you can do all your logic and anything else that's associated with it. So it travels. Right? And now what you're creating is an environment that is just drag and drop to make your stuff. The latest version of EAE has industrial graphics in it. So you're familiar with industrial graphics, right? In your Viva product, it's the same, same industrial graphics. Now they travel. 
The whole concept around the programming is, is uh, somewhat similar, somewhat different. The idea is to create these cats on the very smallest objects that you have. So it could be a valve, it could be a motor. And then you combine these cats to create a block of what you do. And then you combine them again to create a process unit that's associated with it. And that process unit is now portable. It's also saleable, right? So if you develop something that's really, really cool, then you can throw it up on the web and you can have somebody buy it or you can give it away for free, much like an app store that you have. Now it's sharing code. Why is that important? Well, I, if you're a control engineer and you're looking to hire a control engineer, it's pretty damn difficult today. There aren't many out there. We have a lot of computer science guys, but not many people are really into control. The next version of this is going to have Python in it. That is that cool? <laughs> so for all the young guys, that's really cool. And that is exactly where we're heading, right? To get those IT, those IT languages onto the factory floor. And now, what's beauty about this is now, not only can I take this process unit, I can now duplicate, which is just copy and paste, and all the logic, all the variable names, all the graphics are associated with it, get duplicated really quick. Great for modular programming. Drag and drop. That's where the future, that's where the future of this programming is going. It's all be dra drag and drop. Because once you create that one object, it's now yours forever. So when we talk about these cats in function block diagram, right? When you're connecting these cats, or lot of logic or anything, this is usually a digital input or, or an analog point. But in this world, that's actually a pipe, it's a pipe of information that carries all of the data that's associated with this cat to the next cat. And that's important because when I told you in the beginning that we can distribute out to the out to the edge, that's where IEC 61499. That's where it comes into play. Because now I can create these cats which have the logic inside of it, like I showed you the, those pumps over there, and I can distribute it. In this particular case, I have four different controllers. We call it an edge compute device, it's a computer, right? Um, it could be a, a Raspberry Pi device, it could be a Blade server, it could be any computer that you have. It's sitting out there and it has software that's on it. I have an M580, an M251, and an ATD VPAC that's out there. I write the code just like I do today, whether you're in Control Expert or you're in some other software package, you write it in one programming environment with the extra step is that I can take the logic and I can port it or, or send it, distribute it, deploy it out to the edge to a different controller. That's the only difference. And you as a programmer don't have to write any software to make this communication happen. It just happens. In fact, if I didn't like this logic running in my ATD pack, I can right click on that on the on the cat and redeploy it to the M251. So today you have when you have a controller in a PLC, it's one application, one controller. What we're talking about here now is looking over your entire process. Right? One application, 30, 40 controllers. Because now I'm distributing it out to the field. These cats are also important for another way because I can write cats that can now communicate to an API of a software package right into it. So now I make this software a part of my actual system. I don't have to go through a middleware or some kind of story and make a stop at a story and before I get it to some other software. It's part of the software. The dashboards are part of the software. They're getting live data right from the factory floor, which is pretty cool. If I have an SAP system, or I have an ERP system, or MES system, that data can go right to it, right from the factory floor. And if you're an integrator that does that, you can write that code to make it happen, and you know what? You've been unique. Nobody else does it, and you can sell it. This My Data Model, model Analytics that's up there, I thought it was a marketing thing when they first sent me the slide. Come to find out, it's actually a, it's actually a product. My Data Model Analytics is a product of a company, that My Data Models company. Their claim to fame is that they can do advanced predictive analytics with the least amount of data points. They can do it in hundreds of data points versus thousands of data points. They have 
happen to be a Schneider Electric partner, um, and they run in a very small footprint. So when we look at controllers, like we looked at before, that run on Linux, and that box, by the way, that I showed you is a Linux box that, that you can couple from the, uh, from the actual box, that Intel box. Um, you can run IT technology, Docker technology. Have anyone run Docker technology? Right? You can create, you're creating a protected part of the, of the computer and the memory space and stuff with this Docker technology. And now you get the ability to put other software inside there. It's not just your PLC, it could be other software like a My Data Model Analytics. So maybe I have an MCC that has motor starter capability, right? That's inside there. It is. And I want to do some advanced analytics on the motor starter. I can bring it back locally to that, that MCC. I can put a controller in there. And not only am I doing the control, I distribute the control out there, but I'm also doing some advanced analytics. Exxon is really big on this. Again, I use Exxon because they are far ahead of, of almost anybody. They do this at the wellhead where they have, um, they have other software. They have a, a, a PLC that sits next to another box that does this analytics on the oil and stuff that's coming out of the ground, pressure, temperature, whatever, to optimize whatever they're doing. They can run in the same box. That's open for innovation. So now anybody can create a Linux software that can go in there, but it's still, the code that runs this is still protected. We give you a tunnel that is able to pass data back and forth to the other device, but you can't really mess with your, uh, your controlling state. So, object oriented programming, right? In the summary, object or this is where we're going. Everything is going to be blocks at some point, um, and you're going to be dragging and dropping. For the OEM, it's really cool because if the OEM the bill of, uh, delivers a, um, a machine, whatever it is, a device. And they'll probably just deliver the machine and they say, here, here's your logic. Go run it wherever you want to run it at. Any controller you want to run it. And that's pretty cool. Modular applications, distributing the intelligence. By the way, you know, so when you look, think about, like, so XR, I'm doing testing. By the way, I have 13 people that's testing this in a lab. They've been doing it for the last year and a half, two years. And their sole job is to break it. So that's their sole job, is to break it. I haven't been able to do it, which is good. They've given us feedback and stuff that we have to improve and do that, but that is, that's fabulous. So this is good, solid technology. Their view on this is twofold. They can see themselves doing everything in a blade server, a redundancy blade server, or they can see those little controllers <coughs> all over their facility. They also have a vision where they have, you know, one, two, three controllers sharing the load of a process and if one goes down they automatically distribute it to the other two so they can go up they want to replace a uh, a processor they want to update it to the latest and greatest they just go up to it pull it out automatically distributes they plug in a new one and automatically uh it's it up running again shares the load and secondary processor tertiary Four, five, six, you spread the load out and it automatically occurs. That's pretty cool. It's not today, but it is the vision of where we're going. Engineering efficiency, again, drag and drop programming, we're all going to go there. Nobody wants to do this, this programming, and not the people to do all this programming any longer. Um, hardware abstraction, system orchestration, single system. And then data consistency is industry 4.0, right? Um, being able to write data, we can write custom data, um, Linux stuff, custom block, Python, to go and communicate directly with the software 